Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 17, and this is video number 10 in the subset on Maxwell's equations. In this particular video, I'm going to discuss the energy in electromagnetic fields. The previous video to this is number 16, where I showed that the electric and magnetic fields are themselves perpendicular. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use results which I haven't actually derived in these particular sets of videos. If you want to find out exactly where they've come from, you should look at my videos on uh, electrostatics or electromagnetism. So it is a fact that the energy in the, the energy density in the electromagnetic field is as follows. We call it give the placeholder u, and we say that it is one half epsilon zero e squared plus 1 over mu 0 b squared. That's, that's what it's defined as. So obviously in order to get the total energy in the electric field we need to integrate this. So we integrate it as follows. And that will give us the total energy. So what I'd like to show you is that the contribution to the energy of the electromagnetic field is equal for both electric and magnetic fields. So for example, we know that for monochromatic waves where the, uh, the angular frequency, there's only one angular frequency, we know that E, the magnitude of the electric field, is equal to C times the magnitude of the magnetic field. So squaring that we get E squared is equal to C squared B squared. But we also know that the speed of light C is equal to 1 over the square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. So putting that together, what we find is that b squared over mu 0 is equal to epsilon 0 b squared. So what we're going to do is plug that into our initial formula. And what we find is that 1 half epsilon 0 e squared plus epsilon 0 e squared is equal to the is equal to epsilon 0 e squared is equal to the energy density so that should that should one sec there now is equal to epsilon 0 e squared is equal to the energy density okay so we've shown that the contribution from both the electric and mag magnetic fields is 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 the same so Right, that's I suppose a very interesting that's a very interesting result. Now there's one other thing I'd like to show you, and that is that is the pointings theorem. So this is on about this I suppose discusses the transport of energy in the electromagnetic field. So it's the the rate of flow of energy per unit time. So we give it the placeholder capital S, and we call it pointing the pointing theorem. So it's not pointing P-O-I-N-T, it's not that. Okay, so pointing's theorem says the, the energy per unit time being transported by, by the electromagnetic wave is 1 over mu zero E cross B. So the reason we have a cross product is because it gives the direction of the transport of energy and the, the magnitude will also be inside there as well because you know the magnitude of the electric field is C times the magnitude of the magnetic field. So Poynting's theorem is, is very useful. I'm not going to do through the proof because it's quite involved. So just to say it one more time, if we look at the energy density in the in electromagnetic wave, we have U is equal to epsilon zero E squared. Okay, so let's plug in what the actual wave is. So it's epsilon zero, the magnitude of the wave squared, and we've cos squared Kz minus omega T plus delta. Remember what I said in a previous video that if we want to talk about uh, the complex exponentials, we can absorb the delta as e to the i delta, and we can call that we and we, we can call the amplitude multiplied by e to the i delta as the complex amplitude. But I'm not going to do that here because we're just talking about cosines for the moment. So for monochrom mono monochromatic waves, like I said, that the pointing theorem says that s is one over mu zero e cross b.
And we also know that the magnitude of the electric field is C times the magnitude of the magnetic field. Putting this all together, we get that the, the value for the, the pointing vector is C times epsilon zero, multiplied by the magnitude of electric field squared, multiplied by cos squared, and it's Kz minus omega t plus delta, and it's moving, we'll say, I don't know, we'll say the k hat direction, like that, okay? So we can say that the, it's u times c. And that's the magnitude of the pointing vector is u times c. All right, so I think that's all I wanna show you in this particular video. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also comment on, a box, on the box below.